Um, welcome to Crafty Clegg's Creations. My name is Jeanette Clegg and I'm coming to you today from the northwest of England where I live with my husband Timothy and we have a little dog, Zach. Um, today is Monday the 8th of November 2021 and currently the weather here is a really nice pleasant autumnal day. First of all, I need to apologise if it seems slightly dark. We are having some work done on our roof and at the present we've got scaffolding up at the front of the house and it is making the room very dark. I don't know if you can tell or not, so I must apologise for that. Um, welcome to all my returning subscribers and I have, I have had new subscribers and um, thank you for subscribing. Welcome to my channel. You're very, very welcome. And I hope you enjoy, enjoy what you see and stick around. Um, where you can find me, I am here on YouTube, over on Instagram and also have a Facebook page, which I'm not very active with, but I am there. And I will leave all the links in the description box below to where you can find me. It's been almost a month since I last did a podcast because I did do sort of, I took part in Vlogtober, sort of, uploaded once a week with snippets of what had gone on through our week and then our month, which was um, quite nice for us. I enjoyed that. I have got quite a lot to show you and uh, quite a bit to tell you. So I am just going to get right in there because I think it's going to be a long one. Um. I have got just a cup of normal, regular Dow Egbert's coffee today. Nothing fancy. Although Tim and I have been out this morning to do a little bit of shopping and I have bought today my first Christmas tacky mug. I love new mugs at Christmas and I love the tackier they are, the better. I just love them. Um, so yeah, I've bought my first mug today for Christmas. So I'm getting a bit excited about that now. Anyway, let me just tell you, I have made notes and there's quite a lot of them, so I, please excuse me if I'm looking down, but I need to look because I'll just forget. Um, so, the first thing I need to tell you is I went to, was it last weekend? Yes, last weekend I went to um, Knit and Natter with my daughter who lives in Froome. So I did, yes, travel all the way to Froome to go to a Knit and Natter group with my daughter, but we had a lovely time. It was really nice. We've had a few visits over to my daughter's in October, which has been really, really nice for us because as everybody knows, we've been in the middle of a pandemic and we have not seen much of them at all. So it's been absolutely brilliant for me. I've re well, and Tim, you know, it's been brilliant for us all. It's been lovely. Um, and we've had some really nice times with them. So yeah, went last week. I went last week on my own. Tim didn't come with me. Um, and so I enjoyed Halloween with my grandson Maddox and then the day after we went to the, the Knit and Natter. And then when I was coming out and the Knit and Natter was at a pub in a function room upstairs, I'd only had a very small glass of wine but when I was coming out I had a fall and my ankle is a right mess. It's still quite swollen, I still can't go out for, I've not been out for a walk for over a week which is not like me. I mean it will mend um, but yeah. Really what I need to do is sit with my leg up for a week and that's not going to happen because that's not me. I just can't do it. I just can't sit still for that length of time, even though it's a perfect excuse to craft, which don't get me wrong, I would love that. But then there's other things need doing. The dog needs feeding and walking. The house needs cleaning. You know, I've got my little business. So yeah, it's been hard to just sit and rest, but I am trying to do it as much as I possibly can. So yeah, I had a bit of a bad fall. I mean, it was a bad fall, I'll be honest with you. When I went down, and I did go down because I'm not a small lady, I actually thought I'd broke my arm and my leg. I thought I'd broke my, my wrist because of the way I, I, I landed, but I didn't. Nothing's broken. Um, I was just really, really clumsy. Um, so these next few days and weeks, this is what's happening. Um, it was my birthday in October, so my son and daughter-in-law bought me afternoon tea to visit Emma Bridgewater. So I'm going to the Emma Bridgewater, one of her factories, shops, and having afternoon tea there. That's I think that's on the 17th of November. On the 21st of November, we are going to the Miniature Dollhouse Fair, which I'm really, really looking forward to, just Tim and I. Um, still doing my volunteering at Dr Kershaw's, the local hospice near me, really enjoying it, very satisfying. 
Um, and yeah, I'm loving it. Loving giving back and made some nice friends. But yeah, it's just, it's just a really, really nice pastime for me. And I'm so pleased that I can do something for them. So I'm still doing that. Um, I am currently waiting for my Toft Advent calendar to land on my doorstep. Um, I shall tell you about that and what's going to happen during December later on. Um, I am going to be doing Vlogmas this year. As yet, I haven't decided if I'm going to do it on a daily basis, every couple of days or once a week like I did Vlogtober. I personally think I'll probably do it every day because I am trying to clear the calendar for December. I'm almost done with sending my advent boxes have gone out now and my Christmas Eve boxes are almost ready to be packed and sent out. I'm just waiting for one thing to arrive. Um, and yeah, I've got a few ideas of what I'd like to do in vlog in um oh dear, my mind's gone. Vlogmas. Um, maybe mix it up a little bit, you know, do a little bit more things differently than I have done in the past. But, you know, don't don't keep me to my word because it all depends on how things go. So, yeah, I will be doing um, Vlogmas. And the other thing I wanted to tell you, I was so excited about this. It's I know it's ridiculous, but when you have a tiny, tiny business and you sell your stuff, you know your wares like I everybody knows I I sell and make and sell project bags and progress keepers and DPN holders and such like well I was um away at my daughter's I was having some dental treatment done in December in, in October rather and I sold one of my bags in my shop never thought anything of it looked at the address and the name and thought oh I know that name but it can't be who I think it is anyway I, to cut a long story short, one of my actual followers on Instagram said, I've just seen your bag over on Twitter of Fern Britain. Fern Britain bought one of my project bags. I was so excited. Um, yeah, so I just had to share that news with you. I was really, really excited um, that somebody famous had bought one of my bags. It's ridiculous, isn't it? I know, Tim said that. He said, how ridiculous are you? I said, I know I am, but... I was just so pleased and she actually put it on a, a Twitter and, and advertised that it was me so that was nice. Anyway I've been going for 7 minutes 45 seconds and I am waffling so I'm going to get on. So what I'm going to show you first is all my finished objects because there's quite a few of them. So the first thing I'm going to show you is one that I've made for Timothy. I made him this hat, this cabled hat. Um, I haven't blocked it, but I'll be honest, I don't think it needs blocking and I'm not going to. Um, it is a pattern, a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, I can't remember quite what it's called. I will put the name on the screen below. I haven't printed anything off. I'm trying to stop printing as much as I do off because it's just costing a fortune. Um, so yeah, I will leave all everything that I talk about. If I can leave a link to it down below, I will do. Um, and I'll also put on the screen what it's called. So this is just a dead simple act. Took me a couple of nights with a little bit of cabling on. Um, what can I tell you about it? Tim, what we did, there's this much yarn left. It's an Aram weight. Now I can't tell you what the colour weight is here because what Tim did, Tim bought a 100 gram skein of undyed natural Aran just from our local yarn shop. It was 100 grams and I think it was a Sirdar. It was a Sirdar 100% um, wool, Aaron, and he dyed it up himself and he wanted like a grey speckler. Anyway, this is how it turned out. It looks really, really nice on him. I, I will put a picture in of him with it on, posing. Um, it's lovely and warm. It was a real, like I say, a really, really quick knit, not difficult at all. And I always amazes me with things like this cable, that it is such a simple stitch to do. I remember when I first started knitting and my mum and dad used to have yarn shops. I don't know if you know, but my mum and dad used to have yarn shops along with my sister and her husband. And my mum was a very, very, as you can imagine, keen knitter. And she used to make cable sweaters for dad, 
cable scarves, hats, the ch my children had cable sweat. Oh, she made so many. And I was always in awe of how wonderful it was. Wasn't my mum clever? Well, she was clever. Um, but I never realised how easy it was to make or knit cables because I never took any notice. At, my, at that age, I was a lot younger and I never took any notice. But yeah, it amazes me that all you have to do is switch a couple of stitches from your left to your right or your front to your back and this is what you end up with. So that is Tim's hat. He'll be so pleased that I've podcast now because he's been waiting to wear this for about, I don't know, maybe three weeks. And I said to him, you're not having it until I've finished. You're not having it and not finished until I've podcast. Um, yeah, so I wouldn't let him wear it. Anyway, so yeah, that's Tim's at. I did want to put a pom-pom on, but he said no, no pom-pom. So that's the first one. And I love it. It feels so soft. Put that there. The second one that I'm going to show you is also a finished object and another hat. And this was a test knit that I did for um, Laura from Penrose Knits. And it's called, um, oh, see, I've done it again. School run hat. And she's got hats in the pattern. The pattern has been released now. I think it was released at weekend. And within the pattern, you can do hats mittens and I'm not sure if there's a headband anyway I did the test knit for it and here it is this is called the school run hat it's lovely and again I haven't blocked this and I don't think I'm going to because I don't think it needs it um I got gauge for her which I was happy about um it's got that wonderful four well, I don't know what you'd call that. It's like four stripe decrease. I love it. It looks real. I'm not going to put it on because of my hair's my hair's bad enough as it is without putting an hat on. Um, and it's got this wonderful. I don't know if you can see this wonderful. Is my head in the way? There you go. This wonderful pico edge. I absolutely love it. It's a very very cleverly designed hat. Very clever. Anyway, so yes, that's my hat for the oh look got a bit of a thread here that's right for me um and i've got like a mustard coat that's got flowers on which got a small amount of this color in and it looks really really nice so that'd be nice for the winter for dog walking my playground days have gone every now and then i do pick my grandchildren up from school but not very often um so this isn't my playground hat this is my dog walking hat <laughs> but it is called um the playground hat and i did it in the sublime extra fine merino wool dk um I don't really want to tell you anymore because like I say it's for a paid it's a paid for pattern and it's over on Ravelry. Um and I've got that much left. I used I bought two balls and I don't know, I haven't weighed it, but I would imagine there's a good 25 grams there. So maybe if I got another ball, I might be able to get the mitts out of it for a, a matching set. Anyway, that's another one of my finished objects. That was the test knit that I did. I really enjoyed that. It was a nice a, a nice quick knit um i'll just have a sip how are you guys are y'all okay um not long now until december i'm getting very very excited tim and i have decided that we're going to go when i say go all out i don't mean like you know ridiculous and like have uh, loads of foods and drinks and just spend stupidly I don't mean that but because we had such a bad Christmas last year I mean if you're new to my channel then you will have known but um the 29th of December last year my husband went into hospital and had open heart surgery so for us over Christmas we had that hanging over our head we was in no mood to celebrate um I'm glad to say he's on the men well he is he's mended um He's doing smashing, he's, he's out and about, he's pottering in his shed, he's walking, he's much, much happier, he's pain free. So yeah, we're hoping this year that we're going to have a really nice Christmas, we're going to get the tree up and decorate maybe a little bit early and just, you know, make a real big effort. Because like I said, last year was, well, it was poo, it, there's no other way to describe it and that's being polite. Um, so yeah, anyway, I digress, let me have a sip. <laughs> Okay, so 
my next finished object is um, my socks. And again, Tim died this year and for me. It is called Tricky Treater. And it is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and it's just a plain vanilla sock. Um, I used the Winwick Mums, Winwick Mums sock pattern. I love her sock pattern. I did a one by one twisted rib, and then I did 60, I think it's 60 rows. And then I did um, oh, slip one, knit one heel flap and turn is that right and then i did an umbrella toe so yeah nothing really mu much to say about them other than um i can wear them i know halloween's gone i did actually have them on on, on halloween night but then i took them off the day after i just had them on sat by the fire um we had a fire pit outside at my daughter's and i did put them on to go and sit outside um, yeah, I used a 2.25. They fit quite nice. They're quite a nice fit. I've gone off sock knitting a little bit. I have got two half finished pairs of socks. So I've got two socks made and need to make the other two. But I've gone off it a little bit. So I'm not going to beat myself up about that. When I'm ready, I'll finish the other two socks. And yeah, we'll get them finished. Um, but for now, this is all I've got sock wise. But yeah, nice, aren't they? I'm really pleased with this. Well, and Tim was exceptionally pleased. I did have this in my shop and it sold really, really well. And I did have some left and I didn't want to waste it. So I made myself a pair of wrist warmers. And what I did, I held it double with some just undyed floof. I cast on, I did say that I would write up this pattern and I will because it's not really a pattern that I'll write up but I will put it um, in the description below box below what I did. Um, I cast on 40 stitches and I did um, ribbing for I think it was six rows. I think I did 25 rows and then ribbing for six rows and that's it. And I used a 3.75 circular needle. Um, and I'm just, um, uh, they're lovely. They're just nice to pop on. Look at that, just really nice to pop on underneath your coat to keep your wrists warm. Um, I don't know where I read once that it said that if your wrists was warm, then the rest of you, your wrist and your head was kept warm, then the rest of you would be warm. Anyway, quite like them. And because I have a dog, Obviously, it's really handy for me to go out and not have anything on my hands because I have to poop a scoop. But yeah, they're nice, them, aren't they? Doesn't it look different when you just ha when you just add a little bit of, um, you know, compared? Let me bend down and get them. You would never think that is the same yarn as that. Well, you would, wouldn't you, looking at like like that? But it really does mix it up and make it look different, doesn't it? So yeah, I was really pleased with them. So that's another one of my finished objects. I can put them all away when I've shown you and then start using them. Because I don't know about, well, I was going to say I don't know about you. You might not podcast. But me, when I'm making things, I like to keep them until I podcast and show them to you before I start using them. I know, crazy, but there you go. So that's another thing. Um, Then my other one of my other finished objects is, I don't know if I've shown you this, whether I was working on it last time. I have a feeling I was, and it's the Close To You shawl. And again, this is a free pattern on Ravelry. I will, again, leave a link in the description box below. And I did block this. I have, oops, I have blocked this. And I absolutely love it. It is such a lovely knit. I love the pico edge there. Can you see that? I love the yarn. Oh, I love it. Absolutely love it. And I finished this when I went, was it on my holidays with the girls? I think it was. Um, so now I have finished it. I will start to wear it. Oh, look at that. Isn't that stunning? In fact, you know what? I think I might make some more of these. And it was such a nice make. Can you see? Isn't that lovely? Oh, I love it. 
So that's the close to you shawl. Oh, and it smells lovely. It smells of lavender. I've used um the is it ukulele? Ukule, ukule, you can't think of the word. Um the wash. Oh smells delightful. Anyway, I can use that now. So that's another one. I feel like I'm rushing on, but I've been on for a long time, or I will, it will be a long one, and I've got so much more to show you. So I am trying to not stay on too long because you know, although I suppose you could watch it in snippets, couldn't you? And I feel so out of um practice because it's that long ago, or I feel that it's that long ago since I did a podcast. What could I show you next? Right, so the next thing is, I am a bit behind with these, but again, I'm not beating myself up about it. Um, I think I'm behind with... I'll tell you what I'm behind with. Oh, I haven't got... Oh, I haven't got the other one. Oh, I'm terrible. Right, so this is the um, year of the dishcloth that I've been doing, and this one is... Which one's this? This is August dishcloth, honeycomb dishcloth. There you go. And I did it in just a plain white. Well, it's actually an off cream. It's a really, this is that really nice yarn that I like. And again, that smells delightful. Um, It's the, let me have to save the, oops. Sorry, guys. Save the ball ban. Vinny's, Vinny's Nickham. Vinny's Nickham. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm not sure. And this is, what colour weight is this? Oh, oh, natural, that one. And this yarn, I'll just read you a little bit what it says. It says, this yarn is hand-dyed and balled by women from the economically depressed rural area of South Africa. The sales of this product have empowered them and brought... Oh, I can't read what that says. I've ripped it. Something benefits to their community. So, yeah, I've helped some of the um, the women in South Africa buying these yarns. I don't know what they wash them in, but they're delightful. So there's that one, which is the honeycomb dishcloth. And then there's this one. And again, it's done in the um, Nick and Vinnies. But I don't know what this is called. I shall leave... Um, on the screen below, I shall leave the name of this one. And I am behind. I've got one here. I've got it all. Oh, maybe I've got the name of it here. Just bear with me. Which one's that? Which one's this? Oh, no, no. So this one's September, which I haven't done. But I've got my yarn ready here. I'm going to do it in. I don't know if you can see that. That's a, a navy blue. So I'm behind. I've got September's to do and I've got November's to do. So I'm too behind. But like I say, it doesn't matter. I will catch up with them because when sometimes when you don't feel like doing, if you've got a big project on the go or you just feel like something that's like doesn't take a lot of brain power. Although this patterns in this these dishcloths by the kitchen sink, they are quite an easy pattern to follow. Um, and so they are a bit mindless at times. And if you need that, they're brilliant. So I will catch up and will do, because I've got them all now, um, apart from two. So I've got three to do, and then I've got a full set of 12. So it'd be stupid for me not to catch up. So I will catch up. In fact, I will try and do maybe one of those tonight. So that's my dishcloths. And then the other one that I finished, I don't, if you follow me on Instagram, you will see that I took part in a mystery knit along by Imagined, Imagined, I can't even read my own writing, Imagined Landscapes. And it's gnomes. And the one that I did was all work and gnome play. And here it is. Now, let me tell you, I don't know what made me choose these colours because, I mean, if you've followed me for some time, you'll know that I am not a pale pasty colour, pastel colour. I, I do like them, 
but for certain things. And I don't know what made me choose this colour for a gnome because I love bright and cheerful and colourful toys. But I'm not saying I don't like it. It's just not what I would normally choose. But I love the gnome. I loved the knit along. And she's got another one organised for Christmas. So I went ahead and bought the pattern. But Jeanette being Jeanette, bought the wrong pattern. So I actually have to go and buy the Christmas one, which I'm going to do. Um, so yeah, if this is done in four ply, this yarn is from the lovely Kater at Yarn for the Soul in Warminster in Froome, not far from where my daughter works. Um, it is a four ply and I think it's a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. And the one thing I did struggle with was the hands it's not supposed to be just like this she did have um i don't know how to explain it a little thumb and some mittens on but i could not do it i could not it was fiddly i was which is unusual for me because i do a lot of toys so i know things are very very fiddly but i just couldn't do it and i got to the point i tried that m many times i got to the point where i thought this isn't for me i bother got to just finish it off else I'll never do any again and it's a shame because I love them there's a few gnomes that I have actually bought the patterns for that I'd like to make so I decided to just actually it was Helen from Mousy Makes Pod who said to me why don't you just do the simple arms so I did do so thank you Helen um eventually got her finished so this is her she's lovely she's got a big hat with an I-cord spiral that goes all the way around and then a little ring there. Beautiful um, pigtails and then into plaits. Lovely nose, her eyes, there's a bottom. Oh, look at that. I love how that spiral round. It's just lovely. I just love it. And then um, Tim made me a little gnome to go and put my um, samples of my yarn on. There you go. So that's another finished object. And I've got two more to show you. Well, when I say two more, one's finished and one's a work in progress, but got some finished in it. You'll see what I mean in a minute. I'll just have another sip. Excuse me. So my next finished object is a crocheted object and it is my crochet bunny. And the designer is Kira Deluxe. And again, I will leave, if I can find links to it, in the description box below. I've used what it said on the pattern. It is the Crea Deluxe Organic Cotton. Can you see that? This is how much I had left. Just a tiny amount. Don't know what I could possibly... I could possibly get a little scrubby or a bit of a dishcloth out of that, I'm not sure. And then here is the bunny. How adorable. Now, let me tell you, I did not enjoy making this bunny. I think I'm going to put this in my gifting box for my daughter or my son or whoever might have a baby first or next. Um, I don't know why. Didn't enjoy it. I think, if I'm honest, I think it was the yarn. I was not keen on the yarn whatsoever. I don't know if it's because it's an organic cotton. I don't know if it was because, it, again, it was a pale colour. And, you know, I just said that I like making things in really bright colours. I don't know. I don't know why I didn't like it. I didn't think it was a particular nice... I don't know. I just didn't like it at all. Um, so, yeah. But anyway, I managed to finish it. I, did, I, I thought, come on because she literally just had an ear to do so I thought get your act together and get her finished so I did I've not given her a name because she's going in a box um but yeah now she's done I think she's cute isn't she yeah I like that I like it now she's done she's just got like a little tiny bow they're all embroidered with um embroidery floss I used a 2.25 crochet hook crochet and more i love them oh no i didn't tell a lie i used my new tulip i love them i i have to say my crochet um hooks the more um crochet hooks i love them but the tulip ones are just as good i'm not going to say they're not but i don't need any more crochet hooks i'm not buying any more but 
I would like a, a set of them. Maybe, maybe I'll put it on my Christmas list. Anyway, so that is my last full finished object. And again, like I say, if I can find the link to it, I'll put them in the description box below. And another um, ongoing, but some finished. And again, if you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen these, but I'll show you very, very briefly. The first one, I am taking part in the Rico, Rico, Rika Rumi, <coughs> excuse me, bear with me, <coughs> sorry, um, the Rico Rumi Christmas Cal, and it is nine adorable creatures in stockings, and here is my first one, so this is the first one that I've made, this is Little Mouse, they have all got names, and again, I haven't got my patterns with me because they're on my um, iPad, but I will leave um, links for you down below if anybody's interested. So they do come out. She hasn't got any um, legs or a tail. But if you wanted to, you could quite easily add some little legs on that. But she just fits in in the stocking just like so. So I'm going to have these all hung up around my fire at Christmas. So that was week one. There's nine of them in, in total. So that was week one. Um this was week two the little dog oh isn't it lovely it's got um a little i don't know what that is holly leaf on the top he's got his cape on and again in his stocking now he comes out and he's got he's fully fully limbed he's got two legs two arms so yeah and he's got even got a cute little tail look at that um so you could yeah I suppose you could play with this really if it was you know for a child I mean you know because she's got it's got limbs on and stuff I mean not that you couldn't with the other but it doesn't look normal does it with no legs am I waffling I feel like I am anyway I'm sorry if I am <laughs> I'm so out of touch um its face has all been embroidered it's got all embroidered eyes nose little white spots and stuff yeah and ease his stockings here. So let me put him in again. I've really enjoyed making these. And they're really, I'm, I'm doing, um, have I got it with me at the moment? Yeah, I have. I can show it you quickly. I'm doing this week's is a cat. So there he is in his stocking. So that's week two. This is week three. This is Rudolph. And again, all, all hand embroidered. He's got his antlers here and his ears. And I can't remember if he's got, no, he's got no legs neither. They just slip inside, you see. So they are really ornaments, I guess, not really for toys, are they? I've just put these little silk bows on myself because I thought they look quite nice. Slipping back in there. How nice will these be on the fireplace at Christmas? I think so anyway. I'm like a big child, aren't I? Anyway, that's my that's week three. Um, I'm just keeping them all in this little basket um, until I've made them all. And week four, and again, I can't show you because I haven't got um, a printed pattern. It's all on my iPad. Now, you'll probably get, I'm using to make this all. Let me show you what I'm using. I am using... And it's really hard to get at the moment because obviously everybody's doing the crochet along. I am using the Rico. Can you see that? It's glaring in the, the light. It's because it's silver. Rico Rumi Cotton DK. Such affordable this yarn. It's such a nice yarn to work with. So I'm using that. And it's done on a three millimeter hook. And that's a Clover Amore. And this is what I've done. Um, it's the cat. This is the cat this week. So that's how I've got how far I've got so far. I've done both its ears. So it's got two ears, one ear and one ear. <laughs> yeah, I've got two ears to put on. And then again, it goes in its stocking, but it's got a few bits and pieces to add to it. At the moment, I am making, let me just get it. At the moment, I am crocheting its hat, so it's got a little hat. So I'm in the middle of doing that. 
So yeah, I'm really enjoying that. It takes me I mean, maybe a night, a night and a half to do that. Um, and I'm keeping on track with that, which is good for me. Um, and I'm really enjoying it. It's been a really nice, fun crochet along. Right, I'm going to have a sip of tea and then I shall, I shall show you my works in progress. Okay, works in progress. The first thing that I'm going to show you, you have probably seen this before on my Instagram feed. And like I say, it's that long ago since the podcast. I can't remember if it sh I've shown you. It is the Neat Ripple Blanket by Lucy of Attic24. And I'm doing it in the pack that she brought out for a Yuletide blanket. Again, Tim has made me, um, I don't know what you'd call it, like a colour chart. He's bought himself a laser printer, so we've got all this going on now at the moment. But I don't mind. It keeps him keeps him out of my hair and keeps him busy. So he made me one of those. And this is how far I've got with it. It's a fabulous, fabulous blanket. I love it. Um, I've got that far. It's only going to be a lap blanket. Um, so hopefully, I don't know. Look at all the ends I've got to weave in, but never mind. I can do them in a night. Um, so hopefully I'm going to do, I'd like to do another, this amount again. So I'd like it to be double this length. And then I'm going to put a nice border on it. And it's just for me to throw over me, me and the dog in the morning when we get up. Um, and it's such a lovely pattern. It's just, well, it's like it says on the pattern, neat ripple blanket. Look how neat and tidy it looks. And the colour, she's so good with colours, Lucy. She's just, oh, I just love her. The woman is an absolute genius when it comes to putting colours together. So, yeah, that's one that I'm just plodding through. Not in any rush. I mean, I know the Yuletide blanket was for Christmas. And really, these are Christmas colours. But it doesn't scream Christmas to you, does it? So, it doesn't matter. I would like to get it finished for, for over the festive period. But if not... Because, you know, I've got a few other things that I'm doing. So that's one. And then the other thing that I'm going to show you. I've not got that much on the go at the moment. Um, I'm just trying to... I'm just trying to not overwhelm myself with different things. And I've been so busy with work in my craft room, sewing and such like. I've just needed small, mindless things over the past month and that's what I've been doing I've been you know just doing things that I've enjoyed um I can show you this it's a gift but I'm almost certain the little girl who it's for will not be watching you watch now she will be but she I'm not going to say who it's for so anyway this is Florence the Unicorn and it's by Sheepies and it's done in you'd think I'd know by now wouldn't you Katona let me show you so I am making this. And actually, it's a bit deceiving, this picture, because for some reason, I expected it to be a lot bigger than this, and it's not as big as you think. So I am making Florence the Unicorn. I am using Katona, Sheepies Katona, and that's 100% cotton. And I'll show you what I've done. So this is, this is the top bit. Let me show. So that is the top bit like this. Can you see? There. So that's her head. And then this is her arm, which will go on there. See what I mean about it not being very big? But it's such a lovely... Oh, I love working with this. The yarn. I just love this yarn. It's just so nice to work with. So I've done the top of her head, a uni... A, a, what would you call that? A horn are on I've done the on and I did start I think that's all I've done yeah I'm using the tulip and I'm doing it on a 2.5 and I did start I've got all the colors I, I actually went and bought all the colors that was on here because I really like them colors nice you see this is what I mean about pastel colors I love it in that because it's designed in that and it's the girl, the little girl that it's for would is gonna love this. Um, but I started doing these shells. Now they're done very, very differently. 
to what I'm normally used to making shells. I, I can do the shell stitch, no problem, but they're done very different to what I'm used to. And I did eventually get the hang of it, but I had to pull it all back again. I'd only done one row, but one row took me a long time, but I had to pull it back again because I'd miscounted and I was short of a shell stitch. And obviously, because it's a gift, it's going to be a Christmas present. I wanted it to be right. Um, so really, that's all my works in progress. Um, my Rico Christmas and crochet along, my blanket and a few um, little bits and pieces of crochet. My son wants me to make him a hat, so I'm going to do that for Christmas for him. My other granddaughter, the eldest one, she wants a pair of fingerless mittens, so when it's cold, she can still use a telephone. A go figure, isn't that uh, kids of our days? Um, so yeah, at the moment, that's all I've got going. Very, very boring for you, I realise, but yeah, that's all there is. But I have got some incoming goodies, so I'll show you them now. I'll have a sip and then I'll okay, show you. Okay, so the first thing that I've got, I treated myself to some yarn and a pattern. It is from Tracy from Nora George and it's the Howler Cowl. <laughs> Isn't it lovely? So I'm going to make this for myself. There's a story behind this. Um, and I'll, I'll briefly tell you, I was a little bit premature. Um, Tracy was looking for test knitters and I put my name down and she said, thank you very much. So what I did, I then went onto a website and bought the yarn that this was knitted in because I, I just presumed that I'd be chosen. Unfortunately, I wasn't, but never mind because I had it. Once, once it come out, I decided, obviously, I've got the wool, so I'm going to make it. So it's the Howler Cowl. And this is what it's done in. Is that not just fabulous? I love it. And it's not very halloween -y, is it? So it is, let me tell you what it's actually called. Howloween. And it's on 75% uh, superwash merino, 25% nylon, and this tw this five 20 gram minis. And this one is the grey that goes in between, and this one is super sock. And this one is called cauldron, and that's 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon. So at some point, I am going to cast this on because obviously, I don't think that'll take long actually. Isn't that gorgeous? Love the colours. You see, this is me. This is me, bright. I know that we've got the cauldron colour here, but I just love those colours. They're just screaming out to me. Anyway, so that's one thing I bought myself. And then another thing that I bought, I sent one of these over to Dawn for her birthday. Um, and it is the West Yorkshire Spinners signature, and it's the Sparkle, their Christmas colourway for this year. Can you see the sparkle in that? Oh, isn't it lovely? Now, whether I'll get these done for this Christmas, I don't know. Um, and it's called Vintage Tinsel. 75% um, wool, 23% nylon and 2% polyester. Yeah, God, my eyes. Polyester. But it comes with a free pattern. Now, I don't know if you can see that very well, but I really like the pattern. So I think I'm going to have a go at that. Is it not lovely? I love it. I wonder if you can see it better in there. I don't know if you can see. It's quite dark, isn't it? Is it not a lovely pattern, that? And I love the heel. Anyway, so that was another thing that I'd got. I treated myself to. And then, like I say, Tim has got himself a new laser. I don't know what you call it. Laser printer or whatever it is, I don't know. And so he's bought me a load of books to try and have a go. I says to him, I've already got these off a friend, Bert, from, you know, when we did our, well, I don't, you might not know, but Dawn and I from Dawn's days did a make-along in the summer, Enchanted Forest Mal. And I purchased some of these off um, one of the guys, Bert, who gave us a giveaway. 
And I told them I'd already got, already got a set, but no, Timati, I'll get some and I'll try them out and see what they look like. So anyway, I've got a new set of crochet hooks off my husband and he has printed my name on them. So I don't know whether we're going to start stocking these in the shop. Would anybody be interested? I don't know, but they are really nice. They're very light, they feel lovely. And yeah, you get quite a lot in the set. Look at all these, I don't know. And they've all got my name on them. Some of them are, has, have come out quite light. Can you see that? Uh, quite dark rather. Some of them have come out quite light. I just love how the machine mixes it all up. Obviously, if you wanted them, you'd have to, you know, you could have your own printed on them. So that was a treat off. T oh, I'm wobbling the camera. Sorry. That was a treat off Tim. And then I treated myself to these new needles. And I have to say, I don't like them. I just, I mean, I will, I will use them. They're Knit Pro Smart Sticks. And I thought they were quite expensive for what they are. And they, they, they're just a pair of needles that can measure. So every green and silver piece, I think, is an inch. Can you see? Like you see, they weren't cheap, but they're not very nice to use. I'm not really keen on them. And like I say, I will use them if, if, you know, you can never have enough sock needles. So that was new. Very boring, but new. Um, the next thing was my birthday treat from my friend Dawn. She's just spoiled me, that woman. She sent me lots of things. Um, a lot of what she sent me is gone, as you can imagine. She sent biscuits and treats and, oh, she's just wonderful. And then she sent me this yarn. This is a sock yarn, a Zira. Um, it's called... Oh, it has got no colour weight on it. It's, um, yeah, it has, but it's colour 7654. But isn't that lovely? So that's another pair of socks. I've got so much sock yarn. I really need to get back into socks. This, oh, I love this. This is one of Dawn's hand-dyed yarns. Is that not just adorable? It is strawberry cheesecake, four ply fingering weight, 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon. And she sent me one of her little stitch markers. Can you see that? A little, oops, can't, can you? A little bee. This is definitely going to be a shawl. It could quite happily be another you to me shawl. No, close to you shawl. Oh, perfect. That is going to be a close to you shawl. And then she sent me this one. Now, I love this one. But unfortunately, I don't know what it's called because there's no ball band on it. So when next time I speak to Dawn, which I'm going to have a catch up with Dawn this week, um, I will ask her and... I, if it's if I put the video out before, I will edit it later on and I will put the name of this there. Dawn does sell some of her yarns. Um, she does have an Etsy shop. Um, but she's in the Netherlands, Dawn, and she's quite happy to send over here to England, but it's so expensive. So if you if you want a yarn, I mean, if you're anything like me, and if I want it, I don't care how much it costs to get it here. I'll have it. I'm terrible. So, yeah, that's another one off Dawn. And then last, but no means least, I need to tell you about my friend Helen from Mousy Makes Pod. Now, I've just mentioned that we did a Cal, Dawn and I, the Enchanted Forest Mal 2021. And our lovely friend Helen from Mousy Makes Pod took part. But she took it to a whole new dimension. She did I just can't tell you. I'm sure that if you haven't gone over to see her, she has a podcast, she's on Instagram, you must go over and find her because she is just such a wonderful crafter. She's a lovely lady, a wonderful friend. And so she did all this, this crafting. She made gnomes, she made bad men, she made fairies, she made snails, you name it, she made it. And as she was going along, she decided to write a story. 
and last week she got in touch, might have been the week before, I'm not sure, saying that she'd published a book and dedicated it to Dawn and I. We just, well, I don't know about, I have briefly spoke to Dawn about it, but I am absolutely blown away. And she sent me my own copy. You can buy it on, on, on Amazon. And again, if I can find the link, I will leave the link to where you can get it in the description box below. And here it is. This is Helen Ketteridge and it's a tale from the Enchanted Forest. It's fabulous. This book is just, it's just fabulous. It's so well written. The illustrations are all done by Helen. It's all written by Helen. The illustrations are done by Helen. Uh, I can't recommend it enough. Honestly, I can't. Um, what I'd like to do, I would like Helen to um, publish a cookbook. Helen, on over on her podcast, every now and then, more often now than not, she takes you into the kitchen and bakes something or makes something with you. And I actually have a book in my kitchen and I write all Helen's recipes down. I would love Helen to bring out a recipe book. So if you're watching Helen, can you please consider a recipe book for next year? I'd love that. Um, so, yeah, just fabulous. I'm just going to show you a few more. Look at these illustrations. They're just... There's bad man. <gasps> Ooh, it's bad man in. Anyway, I'm not, I'm not telling you. And then I was blown away by this. I need to show you this, guys, because it's just... Oh, it's just fabulous. I just... Yeah, I'm just in awe of Helen. She's just such a clever, clever lady. Where can I find it? Just bear with me. Talk amongst yourselves. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Oh, I just love it. It says, this story is dedicated to Dawn and Jeanette who came up with the idea of having an enchanted forest make along on Instagram in summer of 2021 which resulted in me creating this little story using the characters and props that I'd knitted and crocheted for the make-along. Oh, Helen, I absolutely love it. This is going in pride of place on my shelves here. I just love it. Thank you ever so much, Helen. Anyway, yeah. So, let me see where we are. We must be nearing to the end now, yeah? Yeah, we are. I don't know how long I've been chit-chatting for. I don't know how many times I've knocked the camera. I don't know how many times I've apologised. I will get into podcasting again. Might take me a couple more um, episodes to get sort. Well, you know I'm not a professional and I don't pretend to be, so that's fine. Um, now, I haven't got any shop updates. There's nothing in my shop, only a couple of... Um, in fact, I don't even know if there's any DPN holders left. All, these are, all the bags have gone now. I did have a sale to sort of get rid of the last of the summer stock. Um, I did have a shop update last week for my first lot of Christmas bags, which sold out really, really quickly. But they did last year. It's the fantastic um, fabric from Catherine Hill that I buy from Froome. Unfortunately, it's all gone now. That's it. They only print so much off. And that is it now till next year. But I am going to, over the next couple of weeks, do a shop update on a Friday. I'll do one this Friday. And probably, I might do one every Friday in November. But I'm not going to say that it's always going to be Christmas. Um, Yeah, I'm just going to just do some little shop updates. I've got some ideas. I've got some bags cut out. Um, Yeah, and that's it really. I haven't got anything else to tell you. Other than thank you so much for watching. I'm sorry that it's been a bit of a waffly one and a long one. I am, like I say, I am going to do some um, Christmas bags. I am going to do Christmas Vlogmas. But I will probably do another little um, update and come back and chat to you before then. So for now, thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to press that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up and any comments will be greatly appreciated. I do like communicating with you and I try to answer all the comments. So for now, take care, look after each other and happy crafting, guys. Bye.